Hey everyone, welcome into the Gridiron Show. Uh, Michael McQuaid in for Ollie Connolly, in for Will Gavin, and for Cy Clancy this week. Lads are busy, we're, we're getting ready for a new season. Uh, delighted to welcome back, we've done this just after the draft, delighted to welcome back a guy that we all are very aware of, seen him before, Jeff Ryan. Well, Jeff, uh, a warm welcome, how are you? I'm great, and I got to tell you, Michael, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm happy that you're working for Gridiron. Gridiron's a great organization. You guys do a great job of, of breaking the games down, publicizing the game, and, and getting content out there. So, obviously, for you, I think it's a tremendous opportunity. Really appreciate it, Jeff, and I appreciate your support as well. I know a lot of people that follow Gridiron appreciate your input as well. And people listening to this podcast, watching this podcast, Jeff is in Hawaii. Uh, you've had a fun few weeks, Jeff, just getting back from the draft, yeah? Getting back from the draft and, uh, you know, we battled through COVID ah, crazily as soon as I got back from, from Vegas. And then, uh, but, you know, now it's, as you can see, it's a beautiful morning here in Hawaii and I'll be in the water this afternoon. Lovely, lovely. Well, let, let's get, so we're going to look at four or five key topics this week. And one thing that we're going to end on is your hot seat, because the guy's done it last week, uh, looking at different coaches. It was very interesting. I'm going to, just going to start rolling off from some of the things this week, Jeff. And one of the main topics over the last 24 to 48 hours was actually seeing Colin Kaepernick. Um, he is working out, or he has worked out over the last 24 hours at the Raiders. We've seen multiple people saying, uh, I'm not sure if it was Rappaport, if it was a few people saying online that you know he has you know, relatively relatively impressed the Raiders because obviously he's you know he's rusty. He hasn't been on, on an NFL field for a very long time. What what's your thoughts on that situation? Do you think realistically he could even become the second or third QB in that organization, or do you think maybe it might work out from somewhere else? I think there are a lot of things at play when you talk about a guy like Colin Kaepernick because he's a lightning rod player. He's a lightning rod guy. And and what I mean by that is he's going to attract attention because of his stance, um, you know, in regards to how African-American people are treated in the United States, his kneeling before the games, all of that, which uh, really – started a whole awareness movement in the National Football League. And I think really was part of, it was really the timing of it was amazing, Michael, because it was at the beginning of the player empowerment era in the National Football League, because there's never been a time in the history of the National Football League where players are empowered like they are today. You see players moving like they've never moved, engineering their own moves. Um, and, you know, I think that Colin will always be beyond what he did for, you know, civil rights and, and equal rights and the, the whole deal is his taking a knee really accelerated the player empowerment movement. Now, let's evaluate him as a player. First of all, when you go back to when he was an active NFL player, he was a guy who led a team to a Super Bowl. He, you can put that on his resume. He played extremely well earlier in his career, and then it kind of felt flatlined a little bit, right? And part of that was the fact that what you saw after watching a lot of film was a guy who had some real skill, had a really defined skill set. He was mobile. He, he was elusive, you know, and he could make plays with his feet and his arm. But there were also some things that defensive coordinators caught on to. And interestingly enough, we played him twice when I was coaching in college football and beating both times. And one of the things we did with him was never let him out to his right hand and made him, if he was going to get out of the pocket or move in the pocket, he had to move to his left. And that is something that the NFL defensive coordinators caught on to. And they realized that, and when he moves to his left, he's not nearly as effective throwing a football. And so, you know, one thing you find out about every player, whether it's Kyler Murray or Tom Brady, if there's something that you struggle with, you're going to get it all the time until you prove you can't, that you can handle it. He never was able to, to disprove that. And, you know, his, like I say, his career kind of flatlined and then, then all the controversy came and then he got, then he was, you know, 
in my opinion, he was blackballed by the league and the league owners and for his stance. Now we're coming back to four or six years later. How much have his skills eroded? Because football is not an old man's game. And it's and it's a difficult you made the you made a great point that, you know, he has not been on an NFL field in a long time. It's gonna take him time. He's gonna have rust on him and you're gonna have to knock that rust off. He's not going to beat, in my opinion, he's not going to beat out Carr with the Raiders. Whether he can beat out Jared Stidham, who they traded for in the offseason from New England, and is a guy that obviously Josh McDaniels knows he's worked with for two or three years, that remains to be seen. Now, what every team has got to understand is when you take Colin Kaepernick, you're also going to take on a tremendous amount of attention and how he's going to how he's going to handle that, how he's going to handle the questions that will come, how he's going to handle his teammates in the locker room. I think he would be a popular guy in Las Vegas if, in fact, this happens. So all of those things are things that the that the Raiders or any team that's going to be interested in Colin Kaepernick has to kind of wade through. Yeah, it's, it's interesting what you're saying there about, about the teams. Mark Davis given his blessing as well, I think two years ago for the team to sign him. And the Raiders have always been at that forefront of diversity and, and inclusion. As someone that, you know, realistically only started watching the league around 10 or 11 years ago, he's a guy that stands out to me and a guy that I enjoy, have enjoyed watching. He Obviously, the season that he had in 2013 when he went with a 12-4 and record got to the Super Bowl. It was enjoying to watch. But yeah, you have to sort of wonder, is he going to come in and, and even get to that third string? I tell you what, if he did, it would make the preseason very interesting, wouldn't it? He'd be starting to watch everyone be watching the preseason going crazy. Well, I, I, yeah, I think and, and again, that's well one of the it. things. Like you Nick say, Moses. you got you got to understand what you're getting, right? Mm. And you're going to get a tremendous, no matter who you are, no matter what organization you are. If you bring him in, you're going to have more media requests, more coverage, more, more, more. You're going to sell more jerseys. There are reasons why you would bring him in beyond the football, right? Mm. Now what you're going to have to come to grips with is just where is he physically right now? And I've seen pictures of him working out and pictures of him throwing, and he looks like he's in decent shape. Now, obviously those are small clips. You don't have him in your building. You don't have the ability to physically work him out, do all that. But now the question becomes, okay, if you slot him in as your third, Colin Kaepernick has got to be, in his thirties, I would think by now. And so at this point, do you want a quarterback, your third quarterback to be an older guy, right? Usually those spots are reserved for young guys that you're, you know, you're trying to develop and see whether they can become an NFL quarterback. Yes, sir. And it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And it's again, another domino in this, busy NFL off season where there's something happening every week and something happening over the last few days as well Jeff has been well we've known for a considerable amount of time now that the Cedars GM Kevin Colbert is retiring he's seen through the combine seen through the draft and the Cedars got their lads um in terms of this like you know it's, it's saying here now Omar Khan who's been with the team mm-hmm. is expected hasn't been confirmed at the time of recording expected to be named as the new GM the Steelers, Jeff, are a team that pride themselves on not just their history, their consistency as well. Um, it's it's I mean it's, it's not a surprising move that that, that they're going to try and stay internal, or is it? No, I think it's a very Pittsburgh Steeler move, right? I mean, they went out, they did their due diligence, they brought people in the building. Uh, you look at the moves that they've made in their personnel office in the last couple of days. And all the signs would indicate that Khan is going to be the guy who was a vice president is going to be the guy to now become the general manager. I think it makes sense. Uh, The Steelers, as you mentioned, Michael, it's it's an astute evaluation. You know, I don't know how, how many head coaches have the Steelers had in the last 40 years. I mean, five, maybe. And um, they are an organization that believes in continuity, that believes in, the Steeler way of doing business and that's served them well. That's one of the most iconic and successful franchises in the national football league. Mike Tomlin as the head coach has never had a losing season. How many hall of fame coaches out there can make that claim? 
And part of that, part of the reason for that is exactly what you talked about, continuity. And that's so important as well in the league where maybe you do, I, I know Mike Tomlin has, you know, never had a losing season, but sometimes you don't have all the green and you do go through rough, rough periods, whether that's wins or losses. The Steelers are one that, you know, pride themselves on that. And it's, it's, it's showing now and it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next few seasons, especially with this new GM. He has officially been in as a GM, Jeff. I've just been sleeping over the last day. I love the bird noises in the back. It sounds lovely and fresh in Hawaii there, by the way. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, here, so Khan interviewed for the following jobs over the last 10 years, right? Um, for, for the following GM jobs. Seahawks in 2010, the Rams in 20, 20, 2012, the Dolphins in 2013, the Jets in 2013, the Dolphins again in 2014, and the Texans and Panthers in 2021, and the Bears in 2022. And he finally gets his role. Um, I mean, there's a few teams there. Seahawks and the Rams both won Super Bowls past that there. He must be sitting this week now being delighted. But this is the Steelers team now uh, changing. Ben Roethlisberger's retired. It's a more youthful team. It's a more youthful team, but it's still a team that's founded on Steeler principles. And when I say that, you look at this football team, and one thing that the Steelers have been able to do since they turned it around, right, and – all of a sudden there's Joe Green and Ernie Holmes and Jack Ham and Jack Lambert and defense has always been the calling card in Pittsburgh. And this defense is dominant. And when you talk about getting to the quarterback, they're elite. There are, there are, there is no team in the NFL that rushes the passer better than the Steelers do. Now there has been some change in the coaching staff, you know, over time, but the consistent thing about the defense in Pittsburgh is that they're aggressive, they're physical, and they get after the quarterback. Whether it's Dick LeBeau or who it is coordinating, they're, they're going to get after the quarterback. And that will continue uh, because they've got those kinds of players. Absolutely, man. And like I, the, the next topic that we're going to look at, we... W- we definitely have a lot of listeners for certain teams around the world, right? One of them is the, is, is the Ravens. Another one right now is the Jets. And Great Iron managing editor Ollie Connolly tweeted this week that it was uh, best shape of a, a best shape of his life season. I think he was talking about Mac Jones. However, Zach Wilson, Jeff, has now bulked up to 221 pounds. And he, quote, says he feels like a better athlete with more weight on. Now, when I seen him in person last year and then interviewed him, He's, he was so skinny, like he was so lean, and he's really bulked up. Now, taking that aside, in terms of his development and the way that they've operated in the drafts, what's your expectation for the Jets this year? Because they're in a different I, I think division. The, I think the Jets are going to be much better. Now, the, the issue, if you will, that the Jets are going to have is they're playing in a really tough division because you've got a Super Bowl contender, certainly – in Buffalo, you've got a playoff team in New England, and you've got an extremely talented, and when they played last year, played well, a very, very good Miami team in the same division. How many W's this improvement's going to translate to, that's going to be interesting to see. But I do believe that, you know, they, Joe Douglas and that, that group at, in, in, New York are doing the right things. Robert Sala has started to change the chemistry in that building and in that building. And that's a process. You know, we talk about culture change. Culture change doesn't happen overnight. It's a process. And part of the process is trust has to be developed. And really the thing that they can, if, if you're a Jets fan, you almost and this, may, this sounds illogical maybe, but I, I truly believe this. You can look back at last year and it can, be a, it can be a launching pad year for you because of the adversity that you faced. Because what happens with players, and you, you, you got to be in the locker room to know this. What happens with players is they watch very carefully how coaches react to things going bad right, to losses, to injuries, to 
you know, controversy, to off field issues, all that stuff. And then if you handle it correctly and what's correct, if you are what you say you are, if you do what you say you're going to do when you get the job and you have your first team meeting, then a trust is built. And so as they get more talented and they trust, talented teams that trust one another are usually teams that win. And I think that's where the Jets are headed. Now, how soon, like I say, how soon the the W's outweigh the L's on the schedule? I, I can't tell you that one. A lot of, there are a lot of play, a lot of things that, that factor here. So is Makai Becton going to come back in shape, right? Or is he going to eat his way out of the National Football League? Is that young quarterback that you talked about as being so skinny. Michael, I'm telling you, I saw, when I met the kid, I thought he was 15 years old. I mean, he is so... He looks so young, doesn't he? He yeah. like, literally looks like a kid. Yeah, and, you know, how much is he going to take a jump in his second year? You know, they've gone out and they've really tried to help their football team. I thought they had an outstanding draft, an outstanding draft, and an outstanding free agency. Now you got to get them all in the building, all playing on the same page, get them healthy, and then you got to get a couple breaks early and win some games maybe that you shouldn't, and all of a sudden they catch fire. Who's to say they can't be one of those worst-to-first stories? I, I don't think they can beat the Bills, frankly, mm. but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be totally shocked if something happened in Buffalo to Josh Allen and all of a sudden there's a void at the top and now the Jets fill that void. They're getting good enough on the field. Now, all the other stuff has to take care of itself. And it goes back, and I, you said it again, it goes back to what we said there about consistency with the Steelers, for example. Having that consistency with Robert Sala, riding through that initial tough period and seeing that progression over time, it's, it's, it's intriguing because getting Garrett Wilson, getting Sauce Gardner in the first round of the draft, maybe Zach Wilson goes up a step. We've seen Chris Collinsworth on PFF this week stating he says... He could see if there was any team in the league to do Jeff like a like a Bengals style upgrade or like that next projection. He thinks it could be the Jets. I I don't know, man. I think it's too early for them. But like if you look at the Patriots and you look at that division, okay, okay, if the Bills are at next level, I just it could it could be really intriguing to see who who's gonna be that number two, number three sort of team in that division come the end of December. Yeah, I think you know it's you gotta be really careful when you make statements like Chris made and about the Jets becoming the, the Cincinnati Bengals of 2022 because you got to remember while the Bengals obviously and I'm not taking anything away from the Bengals but who would have predicted that the Steelers would be as anemic offensively as they were who would have predicted that the Ravens defense would get decimated and I mean decimated with injuries to the point where they gave up more more yards and touchdowns than they had in in uh franchise history right who would have who would have thought baker mayfield would tear his labrum and really be injured the entire season i mean a lot of things went right for cincinnati now a lot of things would have to go right for for the jets now that's not to say that it wouldn't happen you know Josh Allen goes down, that that opens up the gates, right? Tua develops and takes advantage of the weapons they put around him in Miami. That makes Miami a tough out because Miami's got, an, I think, an elite defense. Same thing in New England. You're never going to take, you, you're never going to count out a, a Bill Belichick co coach football team. So that's a statement that is easy to make in May and hard to do in December. I love it. I love it. I wish it was December already. We can get some proper football. <laughs> going. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to September, man. Um, looking at young quarterbacks and, and looking at the progression in the league, Jeff, uh, Ollie Connolly folks done an article this for, or, or he wrote an article this week for, for the read optionals, which if you go on the gridiron on the, on the Twitter page, you'll be able to see the article and you can sign up to the read optional. It was on the progression, Jeff, of, of Kyler Murray. And he looked at Kyler Murray from week one to eight last season. 
then he gets injured and he looks at his uh, he looks at his stats from week I think week thirteen onwards and he I don't want to go into it too much I would recommend people reading it but he talks about the you know the potential obviously the Cardinals offense sort of became too predictable you got the situation there with Cliff Kingsbury what's what's your thoughts on this Cardinals team because and and obviously Kyler Murray as well but you know they they have a very tough schedule Jeff. Like, like I'll, 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 I'll read it out in two seconds, but their schedule's nuts. Seriously. Well, you, great point, Mike, because, you know, last year they were seven, I think seven and old, the last undefeated team, you know, in the league, tearing it up. And they were the darling of the NFL. Then, then the wheels fell off. And I mean, they fell off. And when we watched them in the playoffs, what I saw at quarterback was a guy who the game was way too big for and way too fast for. And, you know, I, I, I remember the play and out of, coming out of the end zone where he just kind of threw the ball up and got it picked off. And, I, and he looked like a high school kid playing against NFL players. And, you know, you look at this. I think this is a this is a certainly a bubble year for the Cardinal organization because they couldn't stop the run last year. I think they were like 20th in the league in run defense. They were good in pass defense. They're secondary. Like they're built from the back forward on defense. But, you know, they they got gouged a number of times, you know, up front, especially after they lost J.J. Watt. Now, J.J. Watt's another year older, been through another injury. How much are you going to get from him? Do they have suitable replacements up front? They need to get bigger and stronger up front. Um, you look at the offensive side of the football and your best football player, your best football player, and I'm including Kyler Murray in that, your best football player is going to be suspended to start the season when you're in that tough schedule. Who is going to step up and become wide receiver one? Hollywood Brown? I'm not buying it. I'm just not buying it. I didn't see him develop in... Baltimore, like I thought he would, you know, here's a guy with great speed. He's kind of a one trick pony. He's a vertical guy. Now who's going to be the guy when they stick Jalen Ramsey on, you know, on Hollywood Brown and, and all of a sudden Hollywood don't play him. Hollywood's out of the game. Who's going to be the other guy that's going to function for the quarterback. As a guy that enjoys Colorado sports and has a soft spot for the Colorado State Rams, Trey McBride has to be someone that sticks out there. Like if he can embed himself into that offense, and I know he's a rookie, he was selected like fifty fifth or something overall. Like or oh, I, Michael, I, I, That's crazy. I agree with you, but now you're talking about you got Ertz and you got McBride. Okay, mm. so now that puts you into what? Now you're into you're into you know. 21 personnel and you, you look at it and you go, Hmm, is that what Cliff Kingsbury wants to do? Is that, you know, his deal? It's never been that right. So now how does the offense evolve? Where's the, who's going to hit a home run for you? Right. Because the one thing about Kyler Murray as a quarterback is whether it's with his feet or scrambling around and making a play, to somebody down the field, he's not a quarterback that has the accuracy and has proven that he can sit in the pocket and complete 10 balls to drive the team down the field. Okay, so now you take out D-Hop, and then what are they going to be? What are they going to be? I think it's going to be fascinating to see. Do you know who they're playing week one? Do you know? The Rams? Chiefs week one. At the well, I tell you what, two. they're gonna find out. They're gonna find out who they are real fast. Chiefs week one at home. At the Raiders week two. I at home against the Rams week three. Panthers week four. Philly week five. Seattle week six. See, that's not too bad. But then Philly, we need to talk about Philly next time. I, I, I it, that's really intriguing to see what's gonna happen there with with Arizona, in frankly a division that they can't really go a week without messing up when you put the Rams go back go back in those three start that season again Kansas City you're going to be an underdog right is a homer in Kansas City 
It's it, it's at home, at home, and then it's away in Vegas week two. All right, so it's away in Vegas, right? You're going to be an underdog in Vegas. Then you've got the Rams. You're going to be an underdog. They conce- conceivably could start the season 0-3 before they get to Carolina and get their first W, right? How are they going to respond to that? Because they didn't respond when they got when they got knocked off their perch at seven and zero, and then they lost a couple of games. They did not respond very well. You're going to be without your best player, and somebody's going to have to respond, right? What's your adversity response? It hasn't been good in Arizona so far. Not to say that it won't, but those are the kinds of things that they're going to have to prove to people before people buy Arizona. At least me, right? Now, you know my. It's an interesting, an interesting thing because right now, teams are in OTAs and off-season conditioning and voluntary mini camp, all that stuff. Right? Where's their quarterback? Where's the guy who went public and said, "I'm committed to winning a championship"? Are you? He challenged the club, right? Show me by putting players around me that you're that you're serious and give me a big contract to prove that you're serious. So now that guy who's quote committed, he's not. And I know they're voluntary sessions, right? And Aaron Rodgers isn't there either. Right. But let me tell you something. Aaron Rodgers has earned the right to not be there because he's been a great player for years. Right. You're a young guy that hasn't done anything yet. And you're not there and you say you're committed and you say you're a leader. Again, leaders follow through. Leaders do what they say they are. Right. And right now, I'm I mean, I'm disappointed with Kyler Murray, frankly. If I was if I was coaching in Arizona, I would be really disappointed with it. Now, they're going to say all the right things. And Steve Kime's going to come out and defend him. And we'll get a contract done in December. And, you know. Kingsbury's going to say, well, it's it's voluntary, right? I ain't buying it. I ain't buying it. I'm loving it, Jeff. I'm loving it. Uh, and one person that may be loving it, depending on if they are 0-3, the, the Cardinals after week three, could be Pete Carl in the NFC West. He's not the only one under. Now, I don't want to give away an answer there, but in their final final part of the show here, um, Ollie Conley, Will Gavin, Cy Clancy last week done like a special show where each of them sort of done like a round table and they were talking about coaches that they think could be on the hot seat this season coming. And, you know, obviously Cy has got a real soft spot for Cliff Kingsbury. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't like him basically. But uh, is there one, Jeff, do you think could even be a dark horse? to be a sort of sort of be on the hot seat or one that stands out to you. I think a few of the things that were brought up last week, you had Pete Carl, we're talking about Mike McCarthy, talking about the Panther situation. Is, is there anyone else that might stick out to you? I know I've covered a lot there. If, if you want to say the same one is fine, but anyone stick out to you? Well, I think you can look at all of those and they're different. They're, they're quote on the hot seat for different reasons. First of all, as a coach, what I'm going to say to everybody that wants to ask this question and to Ali and Sai and everybody is that everybody in coaching is on the hot seat now there's no dick for meal three-year plans anymore right you gotta you gotta produce right now right i mean we've seen it we've seen the one and outs right the one and dones so with that in mind i think the hottest of the seats well i think carolina's one i think that's there's no question there i think um i i think Frank Reich, frankly, in Indianapolis is going to have to show some improvement. Um, I think Harbaugh could be if if they don't get better, right? I mean, and that's a hard one to say, but again, you know, I, I don't know if, you know, another bad year, if that doesn't get fixed, somebody somebody's going to pay. Now, it may not be Harbaugh, but somebody's going to pay for it, right? Obviously, you know, there, there, it would be really difficult for Detroit to be that bad again, right? Um, now, Detroit's a little bit of a different organization. They typically don't, you know, they'll weather some 
storms. And I think Dan Campbell's popular there, but it would get hard. Um, Pete Carroll, yes, but I think only because of his age. Pete's over 70 years old, the oldest coach in the National Football League. I think if that would happen, Pete would Pete would have the ability to call his own number, you know, to, to resign rather than get fired. I think Kingsbury is one, certainly. I think there'll be some, if the Chargers don't get better. I think, you know, again, the Chargers, when you look at the Chargers, and you've talked to Tom Telesco, and it's you got to kind of read between, when you talk to those guys, you got to kind of read the tea leaves, right? You look at the Chargers, and the Chargers had chances to win some games last year that they let slip away from them, and some of it was, I think, attributable to a, a head coach who's doing it for the first time, right? So I think that one could be, and I and I do agree one hundred percent with Mike McCarthy. I think he's got to have. I really believe they need to win that division. And, you know, so I guess that's a long-winded way to say there are very few that Belichick will be able to call his number when it when it happens. I think Pete Carroll has that, has won that opportunity. Tomlin has won that opportunity. All the other guys, it's it's like, what have you done for me lately? Well, you've done a lot today. I really enjoyed this chat. I know people listening around the world will love to hear the, the soothing tones of a lovely Hawaiian morning. That's what the bird <laughs> noises were, but I I really enjoyed it here. Jeff, uh, really appreciate you, your support for Gridiron, at Jeff underscore Reinbold. Jeff's on Twitter flat out. You can tweet him, ask any questions. You can listen to Jeff's own podcast, Coffee with Coach Reinbold. Jeff's on Sky Sports in the UK during the season and among many other things. Really appreciate your time on the uh, Hopefully, chat to you soon. I, I I know I'll chat to you soon. But uh, thanks tell, so much. Tell Ali and Sai and those guys to keep doing their thing because Gridiron has, you know, they they've taken it up a notch. And and uh, uh, let me just say this as we part that I think if you're a fan of the game, you have to get tuned into Gridiron because they do an outstanding job of looking at the National Football League and college football every week. Massively appreciate what you're saying there, Jeff, and, j- and just what you're saying in regards to the Great Iron content. Great to get some more content out every week. Uh, folks, if you're listening to this podcast, please subscribe. Check out all these articles and read optional. Fantastic content. That Kyler Murray article is superb. Check it out. We'll be back next week uh, with another episode of the Great Iron Show. Cheers, Jeff. Aloha. <laughs>